Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. I think many of us saw the news story last week about Stonehenge with buzzwords like mystery solved in the headlines of many of the biggest media outlets in the world. I didn't report the story on the Ancient Architects channel as I wanted some time to really digest the claims. Not the mechanics of the idea that it was a calendar based on a solar year of 365.25 days. I can get on board with that, but it's the other claims that were made that Stonehenge was linked to ancient Egypt. The media mentioned this because it's also mentioned as a possibility in the new paper that's written by Professor Timothy Darvall of Bournemouth University, a peer-reviewed paper that was published in the journal Antiquity. I don't want to go into too much detail about the Stonehenge calendar functionality as it is a detailed subject that can be for another video. In a nutshell, there are 30 stones in the Sarsen Circle and each represents a day in a month. It's self-divided into three weeks of 10 days. There was also a five-day month in the annual calendar and this was to harmonise it with the solar year and this short month was represented by the five trilithons in the centre of the site. There was also a leap day every four years, marked by the four station stones outside the Sarsen Circle, which means the builders of Stonehenge had a full knowledge of the solar year, being 365.25 days long. So, that's all okay, it is a theory and not a fact, and, as I said, I can get on board with it. But what about the link to ancient Egypt? What are the claims that have been made? Talking to the media, Professor Darvall said, Such a solar calendar was developed in the eastern Mediterranean in the centuries after 3000 BC, and around 2700 BC, it was adopted as the Egyptian civil calendar, and was widely used at the start of the Old Kingdom, around 2600 BC. This implies the pyramid builders were using the same calendar as the builders of Stonehenge, implying the Egyptian calendar influenced the builders of Stonehenge, that Stonehenge was, in effect, an ancient Egyptian calendar. This idea does paint a number of possible pictures. A. The ancient Britons, maybe traders, went to Egypt and learned the calendar system from the superior culture of Egypt, and then went home and built Stonehenge. B. The ancient Egyptians travelled to Britain and taught the local indigenous people before returning home. Or C. That people left Egypt, started a new life in Britain and built Stonehenge. Which, well, let's be honest, doesn't feel very ancient Egyptian. That might all sound a little unrealistic, but of course it is possible as there were trade links in the distant past. But with a little more digging, we come to an even bigger problem. It appears the Old Kingdom Egyptian calendar didn't have leap years. They didn't add an extra day every four years, which, as we've seen, is part of Darvall's Stonehenge model. The Egyptian calendar was not based on the solar year, but the heliacal rising of the star Sirius, which took place around the time of the Nile inundation. But for recording the days, weeks and months, the Egyptians had a civil calendar, and this was 365 days in length, making it shorter than the true solar year. It's like they had two calendar systems that went out of sync, with the civil calendar losing a day every four years, and it would take around 1,460 years for the two calendars to match up. This great and long cycle was called the Sothic Cycle. In Egypt, there was no day added every four years. So, with all this in mind, the differences between the proposed Stonehenge calendar and the calendars of Egypt are actually quite different. So, did the pessimistic Britons spend decades fact-checking what they were told by the Egyptians, realising the solar year was actually 365.25 days and not 365, and then adjusting the second-hand Egyptian knowledge before building Stonehenge? 
It does all seem a bit unrealistic, but I can't think of another way to explain it. Unless, of course, the ancient Egyptians did not influence Stonehenge. In his paper, Darville does say that the need to adjust the calendar every four years was understood by the Egyptians, but was not implemented until much later. I've looked into this and I can't seem to verify it, and I can't access the source he cites from 1974. To me, it seems more likely that the Egyptian civil calendar came into Egypt from the outside, maybe from Mesopotamia, which did have a similar calendar system in the 4th millennium BC. Maybe both the builders of Stonehenge and the Egyptian civil calendar were both influenced by people from the Fertile Crescent. But even if it is correct that the Egyptians influenced Stonehenge, how many circular megalithic structures do we find in Egypt? What is a comparable structure? We have the pre-dynastic Nabda Playa, and this dates to around 7500 BC. But physically, it's a poor comparison, the two structures look nothing alike, and also, Nabda Playa was made around 5000 years before the Sarsons were erected at Stonehenge. Stonehenge is circular because it makes use of an older, pre-existing circular henge monument and this was built in the Neolithic. Phase 1 of the Stonehenge monument came centuries before the first Sarsons were erected, which was around 3100 BC, and this was also the work of a different earlier culture. At Stonehenge there is no clear Egyptian iconography, unless of course I'm missing something. Yes, you could argue the indigenous structures and culture were mixed with knowledge and ideas from Egypt, but there really isn't any evidence, especially as the calendar systems from both cultures were quite different. As an argument for the Stonehenge-Egyptian connection, Geoffrey of Monmouth is mentioned by the Professor, who wrote in the 11th century AD that the Stonehenge stones actually came from Africa, before being taken to Ireland and then Wiltshire. But Geoffrey of Monmouth has more in common with Tolkien than Herodotus, as he says that giants moved the stones from Africa to Ireland, and then Merlin used magic to get them to Britain. Geologically, we know the Sarsen stones don't come from Africa, and Geoffrey of Monmouth was writing many thousands of years after Stonehenge was constructed. He really isn't a credible source of history. Stonehenge has been called a calendar for many, many years, and whilst I do like the full explanation that's given by Darvall for why the stones are arranged as they are, for how the stones of Stonehenge work, I don't understand the need to include ancient Egypt into the theory. If anything, it just weakens it. The large Stonehenge monument was the work of the Bell Beaker people, who entered Britain in the Bronze Age, and have their origins in Europe. I think it's more likely the Stonehenge calendar system was actually the product of the culture that built it, a system that developed and evolved through time as this culture migrated through Europe, an option that Darvall doesn't deny is possible. Unless we find some quality physical evidence to connect Stonehenge to Old Kingdom Egypt, I don't think there is any way to directly connect the two sites. Of course, this is just my opinion, and I'd love to know your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.